Good morning, good early morning, and welcome to BGC Mitzvah Day number 113, part 6. Uh, Mitzvah Day keeps us on its way, and let's get right into it. Here we go. This is the amazing mitzvah, the prohibition to eat a mixture of meat and milk, once again, found in the second book, the book of Shmos, Parshas Kisisa. The sages imposed a further stringency with regard to this matter of meat and milk mixtures, as they also said that meat and milk mixture contains a unique prohibition, which according to some commentaries, prohibits more than with regard to other prohibited foods. From the matter of the meat and milk prohibition, if milk became mixed into meat and the piece of meat into which the milk was mixed does not contain 60 times the volume of the milk that has fallen into it, we view the entire mixture comprised of both the milk and meat as being a piece of forbidden food. Thus, if that piece falls further into a pot of meat or into a pot of milk, and we wish to determine whether it is nullified, we must measure it on the basis of its entirety. That is, if the piece of meat into which the milk was mixed subsequently fell into a pot of meat, it does not suffice if the meat in the second pot contains 60 times the volume of the milk that originally fell into the first piece of meat. Similarly, if the piece of meat into which the milk was mixed subsequently fell into a pot of milk, it does not suffice if the milk in the second pot contains 60 times the volume of the original piece of meat. Rather, the entire meat and milk mixture is considered a prohibited entity and the second pot must contain 60 times the entire piece of milk, meat together with the milk that it absorbed in order for it to be nullified. I know there's a lot to handle over here, but we're getting through it. And this is referred to by our sages of blessed memory in Hulin as the piece itself becomes intrinsically prohibited in the same manner as Nevela. Now he says here Nevela is... That is, one might have thought that the prohibition is dependent upon the presence of the meat and milk independently. And thus, if either the meat or milk is nullified, the mixture is permitted. The sages teach that this is not the case and that the prohibition is not viewed as being limited to a single part of the mixture. Rather, the entire piece is considered prohibited for the reason that Chinach shall explain. Okay, so let's continue. The reason for this uniqueness is because in the case of the meat and milk prohibition, it is the blend that is formed when the meat and milk are combined that causes them to be prohibited. And therefore, after they become mixed together, they become intrinsically prohibited in the same manner as a piece of the vela. The vela is like tray, like, like unkosher, like pig, right? So that meat, even though the meat itself is kosher, the milk is kosher, but together, it's like a piece of pig. The principle of chaticha nasa nevela, the piece becomes prohibited as nevela, was therefore said with regard to the meat and milk mixture, where both the meat and the dairy are entirely permitted on their own, as I just said, and it is the mixture that is the subject of the prohibition. Thus, once the mixture has been formed, neither of its components can be viewed independently, and they cannot become nullified separately. And we'll learn more about this, God willing, tomorrow. Well, tomorrow night. Have a wonderful Shabbos. Thanks for listening to Sponsor Future Mitzvah. 36, 100 of gold. Bye for now.